Put your hands together. Welcome to your friend of mine, Miss Carrie Hand. so that way they can come in here and just get back and clean in between each panel. Um, so I do have to kind of cut the panel a little shorter than I normally would like to. So we're going to do probably 30, 35 minutes, something like that. Um, make sure you guys have plenty of time to ask questions, so think of anything you'd like to ask Carrie. Um, first of all, I would like to start out with, um, how have you been handling the whole COVID thing? You're an elementary school teacher, right? Yes, it's been interesting. Um, obviously last year was, no one was really ready for it. Where I live, it's a smaller community. Um, my school is a low socioeconomic, so not all students had Chromebooks or any even internet. So it was it was difficult at first, and it was difficult as a mom. My daughter was in seventh grade. At 13, it was the end of the world, and she knew it. Um, my son was in fifth grade and really struggled. He's very both of them are social, but my son. Although he won't admit he loves school, he does. So it was difficult being at home, trying to help them, trying to help my um, my own children. And I kind of turned my dining room into a classroom. And my students were like, you're the only person I know who would do this. Um, but it kind of kept it out of the rest of our house. So that helped us. Um, the summer was nice. We just kind of stayed at home. We did do a road trip. I don't know if we were supposed to, but we did. We just had to get out. Um, but my husband's a police officer, so we also had the dynamics of the summer for him for that. So it just was very stressful. And then we started back in September, in August, and I was, even though my kids were remote, I was still in the classroom working. And then now we're like half and half. So the kids are half in class, half not on, like three hours in class and three hours not. But this year I'm teaching, because teaching during a pandemic is not exciting enough, they decided to give me a combination class. So I am teaching two different grade levels, and I have, the only nice thing is a lot of my, so normally I teach fourth grade, and it's a four or five combo, so a lot of my fifth graders were in my class last year, and we have kind of a nice bond, which has helped, I think, all of us through this. So it's been rough. Um, I got COVID in December, um, so we have all that fun and exciting stuff, but it's, it's life. Right, right. Well, you know, I, I want to ask uh, more particularly from a school teacher standpoint, because, you know, it used to be go to your classroom, you would do your job, you would come home, but now your home is your classroom. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a 24 hour thing now. Well, fortunately, we are back. My, we're back in person. Are you guys are back in now? Yeah, we're one of the very few districts in California that's back in person. Nice. So we are half days. So I have my, I have 14 fourth graders in person in the morning. Um, and I'm in a small portable classroom, so trying to be six feet apart, like my class is just a hot mess this year. And I'm very um, OCD and organized about things, and it's not at all, which is, that's probably what's driving me the craziest out of it all. Um, and then, you know, fourth graders with their masks on, you're constantly like, what? I, I, and you can't go to move around too much, so it's interesting. My fifth grade class is in the afternoon, and I have 16 in that class, but eight of them are online, and eight of them are in person at the same time, and it's, the difficult part is like my in-class kids, they're like moving through their work at like a normal pace. My online kids, they're like, oh, look, there's somebody walking by, or they're constantly, and if I don't have them do the work while they're there, it'll never get done. So my poor in-person kids are, I'm like, just do the, they have to do, um, I, I know every state's different, but they have to do four hours of work, and we have to, I mean, my paperwork's like quadruple this year because we have to prove that they're doing a certain amount of work each day. And so there's three hours in class and then an hour at home. So I tell my kids in class, look, because they're so distracted, you do your work for at home. Start it now, at least while you're here, because they've got to finish it. But it's just been, it's been interesting. I'm ready for normal days. Right. I think we're all, we all are. <laughs> um, so I guess uh, one of the questions I'd like to ask is what's scarier? Interstellar Xenomorphs or a classroom full of kittens? <laughs> I think sometimes the kids' parents. <laughs> <laughs> touché, touché. All right, so um, let's talk a little bit about aliens. Um, 
Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with, uh, you know, how you got into the whole scene as new and, and, you know, how all that took place? It is a very random story. Um, so, I lived in England for a while. My dad was in the military, and he was stationed at Lake and Heath Air Force Base. And they walked, I guess they'd gone around looking for who they were, like just what James Cameron was looking for over here in America, and they couldn't find it. And they, everyone, they, they didn't want like a big name, I'm guessing for the pay. But um, they wanted, they kept getting like, people who'd been in commercials. And so they were trained that when they delivered a line, they'd smile. And Newt wasn't a smiling child. She had, didn't have that personality. So they decided to start looking for someone who was, you know, had never been trained, had never really had that experience before. But they wanted an American, so they went overseas to American Air Force Army bases. And I mean, the irony of it all is I actually had an English accent through it. So they were looking for an American, but some of it, you can definitely tell that I've lived in England for many years. Um, and so they came around, now keep in mind this is 85, because this, if this happened now, like, you would think there was like a bunch of creepers out there. But they went around and uh, were taking pictures in the school cafeteria. And then they, he knew he wanted blonde, so they were like all the blonde kids there, and you know, that was kind of what he had in his mind. And so they were taking those pictures, and then um, I didn't think anything of it. I know that's kind of weird. I actually used to go home for lunch every day because we lived just around the corner, and you could, you lived close by. And my mom, that was one of the very few days I actually ate lunch in school cafeteria, so it was destiny. Um, and then they went and took all those pictures and they took them to the school nurse because she kind of knew everybody and was able to get them the information to call home. My dad worked at the hospital on base in the emergency room. He, took, he was in charge of it and she sort of dealt with her a lot. And so she called and said, you know, I just want you to know this is what happened. And they keep going back to Carrie's picture, so I want I don't know any of the other parents, but I wanted to give you a heads up that this is their, some, some movie, I really don't much, know much about it. And so that my dad came home and he's like, did someone take your picture? And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Um, <laughs> and so then they were like, well, if this happens, are you interested? And I was like, oh, okay, because my parents were, they're not, like, I, a lot of people think my parents pushed me into it, but it was definitely my decision. But we thought it was like a tiny little part on some little tiny movie that we never knew anything about. Um, and so then they called and asked if I'd like to enter audition. So then I went to several auditions at my school. And then it was like five or six girls that I went to school with. And then they took us to London. And we went to London and we went to, the, um, to Pinewood and did auditions. And then they just said, actually sent all the parents out and they went and took them on this tour in London. And then they called and said, okay, well, it's between Carrie and a girl in the States, and Sigourney's gonna fly over on Concord. And I was so excited because I like, and like, Concord and the lady from Ghostbusters. I mean, I was just like, in heaven. If I didn't get the part, I didn't care because that was like the coolest person I gotta meet. Someone who was in Ghostbusters and they came on Concord. Um, and so I went to the audition, and I guess it was kind of just to see if we had a bond. Um, and it was almost immediate with her. Like, immediately I walked in and I, I guess they they still kind of tease me about it. I actually went out and bought an autograph book. And the first thing I did when I walked in was I was like, oh, Miss Weaver, may I please have your autograph? Like, you were so good at the Ghostbusters. Um, and they pretty much knew that it was me, but they weren't 100% sure, so they giggled, I guess, when I left. But we had this audition, and I would say within a couple days, they called and they said, well, we really want Carrie to watch Alien, and she has the part. But again, we still didn't really know too much, I mean, we were like a military family. We didn't have any idea about Hollywood or what was going on. So, and then it just kind of all happened from there. And shortly after we filmed, we moved back to California because my dad was stationed then back there. And we went to all you know, the openings and everything. But as a fifth grader, most girls here can understand this. Girls are mean. <laughs> And if the, and boys, you probably saw it a few times over the years, but if there is something a little bit different about you, they like hone in on that. And so not only was I the new girl, I had an English accent and I'd been in a movie. I was like the number one target. So I kind of pushed it out of my mind and I really didn't do anything with it. Um, and I didn't realize how 
big aliens was until, I don't know, my daughter was maybe one and she's almost 14 now. So until like 13 years ago, I didn't realize that it was such a big movie, which is, Well, it's part of my parents were like, you're not going to get a big head, you're just like, you know, so I don't know, but. Now, your brother Chris also had a small part in the movie too, right? Yes, my brother Chris was, played my brother in the movie. Um, so there's two main scenes that were really, I felt crucial to the movie. Um, the scene where Sigourney learns about her daughter, and they show the picture of her daughter to her, and that was actually her mom. So one of the main crucial scenes for her character and explains our relationship was very personal to her because it had a picture of her mom in it, but it was cut. And then for me, that I feel that explained my character and that my parents and family were the ones that took the alien back to the, the colony and killed everyone essentially, was very important to my character, but then also was personal because it had my brother in it, so that kind of sucked. Now, his scenes are in like the extended director's cut, right? Yes, I think it came out in the nineties. So, so you guys don't listen to this part. Between me and you, did you ever tease him about actually not making it? You know, you would think I would have, but I didn't. I felt so bad. <laughs> and sometimes I, girls are mean. They are, but I wasn't because I was terrified of my parents because I just was. I was a good kid that like followed direction and did what I was told. And I was so, my mom's like, don't you say anything because that is really hurtful and it can hurt his feelings and, you know, this, that, and the other. I mean, I was, in no way was I carry him at my house. I was like, go do the, you know, it was like I was normal every day, Carrie, and I knew I would get in so much trouble. And I had enough problems getting grounded as it was. I didn't want to get grounded for that. Yeah, you're a good sister. My sister's would have ruined that all day, every day. Maybe call me up right now and just tell like, hey, mister, out there, I'm paying on that. Remember, you didn't make that. Oh, yeah. Well, he got teased a little bit too because you know he would say, "Well, I was in it, but it got cut," and then they make people would make fun of him at school. So I understood that aspect of it too. So I don't know. Maybe it was too nice, actually. <laughs> She's rethinking her thoughts. I know. <laughs> so um, I heard that you know, the uh, the little Bob from District Nine had rewritten a script for a Games Three project. Um, I can talk about it because I know nothing about it. Oh, okay. So I don't know anything. Um, I've seen things like what you guys have seen, but I have not really heard anything. Would you be interested in what we're talking about? Never say never. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's hard as I'm a teacher, I'm a mom, like I have a very busy schedule. Um, coming to these sometimes are difficult. I mean, it's that um, bittersweet feeling of it. Every mother always dreams of that time away from their family all by themselves, and you're like, yes, and what you imagine it's gonna be, and then you get there and you're like, oh no, like today my daughter has a soccer scrimmage, and it's like, oh no, I'm gonna miss the soccer scrimmage, even though I've seen like a million of them. But like, <laughs> if it worked into my schedule, yeah, but I mean, I, I, I don't know, we'll see. All right, so let's go to the audience. Does anybody out here have a question for Gary? How about Barbara Reagan? Did you have some other opportunities after that? What happened after that, as far as your acting career? Um, so when I came back from the States, from England, uh, I was offered immediately several television shows. And I don't know if it's the same now, but at the time, you had to sign like a seven-year contract. Mm. And I just kept saying to my mom, but I'll be 17 when I'm done with that. Like, I will have missed all of high school. I will have missed all the fun stuff. Like, that's, I want to do that stuff. And so we opted not. It was my, so it was always my choice, like, whatever I wanted to do. And so I opted not to do any of those. And also, um, I don't know, is anyone in here from California? Okay. So California's a little different. <laughs> and it was at 10, like, a s really hard going from England to California. It was like a culture shock. Um, it was very, very different. And I mean, it's amazing, don't get me wrong, but it was very different. And so it was really hard for me. And I decided, I was offered a few movie parts. And then I mean, movies, like the money falls through and different kinds of stuff. And there was some that I was really excited about. There was one that I was going to do that... 
I was going to have to go to Japan, but I was going to be there for like two years. And so it, it was kind of, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? By that stage, I was almost in high school, so I, am I going to miss two years of high school? And then I'd always just wanted to be a teacher, so I kind of thought, you know, I was, I was going down there, I'd gotten her parts, but was it really what I had my heart set on? So I decided that I just wanted to do, just wanted to be me and do exactly what I wanted to do, so my parents encouraged that. So it's kind of like a cool little behind the scenes thing about me, you know, like my side life or whatever. scared. I mean, that's like the obvious thing. Um, even though I hadn't, I wasn't really, I got a chance to see a lot of stuff beforehand. I guess, I found out later on that I guess James Cameron and Gail and Herb were worried that it would like have a psychological effect on me. All the scariness and so dark and everything. So they made sure that I was able to go to Stan Winston's workshop whenever I wanted. And at the very beginning, before everything started, they had me on set. Like, they were worried about like the guns and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, I was a military brat. Like I didn't think anything of it. I grew up when I the base that I was at in England was actually I don't know if many of you remember there was a base that bombed Libya, and that was the base that I was at. So like they were playing and they're out there with their machine guns and everything because we kept getting threats and bomb threats and that. So it wasn't something I wasn't used to, I was used to seeing it, but they had me there earlier so that I could get used to being around that, but they also had me there earlier so that I could get used to the, the xenomorphs and the aliens. And to be honest, I'm kind of embarrassed to me. I'm kind of scared of dogs because I've been bitten by so many, and so I used to just pretend that the xenomorph was a dog. Um, I know that kind of takes away from the excitement of it, but I'm kind of a wimp, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing it, and you're like, who's a good boy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about another question? Yeah. All right, so let me ask real quick. Um, you received a Saturn Award uh, for Best Young Actor? Yes. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so the Saturn Awards, I don't know a lot about like, the history of it or anything, but right after Aliens came out, they... I won Best Juvenile Performance for the Saturn Award, and there was another award, I can't remember what it was though. Sorry, I should probably remember that. And so it was actually when Sigourney was filming Gorillas in the Mist. So she won as well, and I accepted her award for her, which was kind of cool. But it was cool going down there and you know, having like a little, like getting up and like being acknowledged for what I did, because at the time, children, not that I'm not saying that I thought I felt like I earned an Oscar by any means, I don't. But like children weren't as acknowledged for their roles in movies then as they are now. And like you see a little bit more like in the Oscars. Not as much, but you still do sometimes. So it was nice to have, it is nice to look back at it. And it's like, it's sitting on a shelf, like right above my television, so like where everyone can see it, but it's not like obvious <laughs> that that's <laughs> what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> so it's kind of cool. Um, so, as a mother, have you, are your kids old enough to have they seen the aliens yet? So, oddly enough, they hadn't watched Aliens. My daughter will be 14 next week, and my son is 11. And I am that mom that's like, no, you can't play Fortnite. No, you can't. Like, I am like, I am that mom, I admit to it. Um, you know, restricting electronics, which is kind of going on the window this year, but that's a whole different thing. But they hadn't watched it. And partially as I'm a scary cat, I openly admit my husband watches scary movies and that when he's off and I'm not home. And I am fine with that because I have a very vivid imagination. But so do my children. Like, they totally get that from me. Um, so I thought that if I let them watch it, it would be really scary. But last weekend, I did an interview and they actually they came to my house to do it. And they're doing a, a documentary on 80s sci-fi movies. And... So that kind of got us talking a little bit about it. And then Sigourney had actually sent me an email and asked me to call her about something. So then obviously the kids are like talking about aliens and asking me questions and everything. 
And my son's like, well, I want to watch it. So my husband and I were talking about it, and I said, well, let's, okay, fine. So they actually watched it last weekend for the first time ever. And I was all proud, like, <laughs> and typical, like, how do you feel about your mom? They're like, eh. <laughs> yeah, more impressed. Yeah, they were so impressed. They're like, oh, there's our buddy Sigourney. Oh, Bill. Oh, I miss him. Oh, oh. no, Rico dies. Oh, Mom, why didn't you tell me that? I'm like, but look at me. Like, look at me. And they're like, okay. And they're like, but it's just so, Sigourney is so amazing. Look at her. And I'm like, I gave you birth. Like, I gave you life. And you're like, not even impressed by me. They're like, no. I'm like, so. My students are more impressed than my kids are. Yeah, I, uh, one of my favorite pictures that I've ever seen is Carrie King from Slayer uh, receiving an MTV Music Award. And his daughter is sitting there looking at him like he is the dumbest, like, most uncool. That is Gary King. You are totally the same. Yeah, and that's. I mean, so both my children were actually in my class for fourth grade. Um, my son, they're they're very opposite children. My daughter is very much was like me sitting in class. You know, can you please be quiet? I'm trying to learn type thing. But I am that teacher that will sing and dance and do whatever I need to do to get their attention or to tell silly stories. And I would look over and my daughter would, like, I'd be singing. And I should add, when she was a toddler, she would sit, I can't sing at all. And she would sit in the car and stop singing, you're hurting my ears. So I would be singing a song in class. And I feel like it's my duty to educate these children on, like, 90s music because they keep saying it's like old music. And I'm like, no, it's not. So I'll sing, like, Vanilla Ice and things like that. <laughs> and they're like, whoa. And I'm like, yeah, kind of. So, but I'll look over at my daughter and be like slinking down in her chair. So that was what I knew I needed to stop. My son would just join in with me, so. So, um, as far as the filming of Aliens, what would be your most memorable interaction from the film, either with the characters or with the uh, puppets? I don't know, there was two scenes that really stand out. One was when I was being pulled across at the very end. And the cool, the thing that, the reason that stands out to me a little bit is because the harness that I was wearing was actually the same harness that they used to have like Superman fly and things like that. And so the big draw of it, because I hated having it on, it was, a, it was a pain, it took a while to get it all like situated and everything, and then put my costume on, and it was, I was nine, so like they get it all on me, and I'd be like, yeah, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so, in order to like, because it took a few days to film that scene, and so in order to get me to not like to go to the bathroom for before I put it on, they would say, okay, at the end, the very last day of shooting on another set, we're filming with, like aliens flying around in that, and it's the same harness, so you can go over there and fly around. So that was kind of cool. Um, a very intense scene was the cocoon scene. That was brutal. It was just filming it was hard because I couldn't move, I couldn't do anything to break it because it could only, the actual breaking of the cocoon could only be done once. And I was terrified I was gonna break it and I couldn't even rest my feet on. So I'm kind of at like this awkward angle and one foot is up a little bit higher, but I couldn't rest my foot on it because it was so breakable. And I had like a little small hole over here to crawl through they made it just big enough for me so you couldn't tell in the filming. So I, and then the, the slime takes hours for it to be, like, to come out of your hair and everything. And we were on location. And so all I had was a trailer outside that did not have running water for a shower. And so they offered to have a hotel, like, nearby where we were at because my other hotel was, like, an hour away from where we were staying. It was closer to Pinewood than it was to this location. And so my mom and I were kind of like, well, we don't want to put you out and like, we have to spend that extra money. That seems ridiculous. I've got a hotel. If you don't mind, we'll just take the costume home to the hotel and then we'll bring it back in the morning. So they said, okay. And everyone at the hotel knew that I was filming Aliens. All of the characters initially, well, except Sigourney, we initially started at that hotel and then as the guys in their 20s and 30s 
like got to know London, they wanted to move out, and they had their own apartments, but we just stayed at this hotel. So they all knew us really well. And it was Chris, it was around Christmas time that they filmed that, and I went back to the hotel, full costume. So you can imagine what I looked like, slime everywhere, with my jacket on and my hood up, trying to like hide myself. Like I, I can only imagine I look like a street urchin or something. And they were having a, it, some company was having their Christmas party at the hotel that, that same day. And so I walk in with my mom, and my mom's like dressed normal. So they probably were thinking, what is wrong with this lady? And we push the button, and I'm just thinking, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I just want to get in the elevator. And right as the elevator came and we got in, two couples came in their tuxedos and formals and all that stuff. And they jumped <laughs> in the elevator, and they saw my mom first, and they started talking to my mom a little bit. And then they saw me and scooted like as far away from me as possible. So it was like, not only was the filming, but then I felt like I I felt like I had coronavirus at the time before coronavirus was around. <laughs> and everyone was like trying to get away from me. Hopefully those eight people watched the movie at some point and realized it was me and not some crazy person. Because I can imagine the story they have to tell. So. CPS got a couple calls. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other audience questions before we go see what happened? Another one? Oh, wait. So being that you chose to like have the normal lifestyle compared to the Hollywood lifestyle, what is it like to also have these relationships with Sigourney Weaver and other people, but also maintain your normality? Well, for me, they're just normal people. Like, I see a different side of them. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, there was time, there's times I'll be sitting at a table, and I'll be like, shit, I'm sitting next to Sigourney Weaver. Holy <laughs> cow, oh my god, that's so amazing. And I'm, like, geeking out inside, or like, but for the most part, they're just friends that I've known for so long. It's been really nice to build relationships with them as an adult and for them to be able to meet my family because it's a part of my life that not a lot of people can completely understand. And it's like my secret life. Everybody knows about it, but it just doesn't get talked about. Like, I was talking to one of my daughter's teachers and she, she said, oh, what are you doing this weekend? I said, I'm going to Atlanta. And she said, what are you going to Atlanta for? And I said, oh, well, you probably don't know this about me, but, and I told her, she goes, oh, no, I do. I was like, yeah. So a lot of people know it's just like yeah. Yeah. out there. Yeah. But um, I try, I'm glad I don't do these every weekend because your head does get, I'm sure, could like grow. Um, <laughs> but it's, I don't know, it's, like I said, they're just my friends. I don't think anything of it. Um, I mean, actually, I usually call Sigourney Ripley, and I don't know, it's kind of, but it's because what I called her, but, like, um, you know, Bill and that, he was, like, my big brother on the set, so it's just, they aren't, I mean, they are oh, Sigourney Weaver, but then in the same respect, it's just Ripley, you know, it's not, I mean, whatever. But do they treat you, like, normal, like, is it a normal friendship? Yes, they do. And it's nice, like we go, when we go to the convention, we love going when it's all of us because we're like a big family. And they're all be like joking around, oh, it feels like it was just yesterday. And then Carrie walks in the room and we're like, oh yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> and she's like an adult with kids. I mean, my kids are older than I was when I filmed it. But they're all, my daughter is like copy and paste of me as far as looks. And they're just like, oh, so they always trip out. And like, but we are just like a family. I don't know how to describe it. I guess I thought all movies were like that, but according to them, they aren't. But I don't have anything else to face up. So, uh, have you ever thought about bringing your kids to a convention? They've gone to a couple of like the conventions. I don't bring them when it's just me. Like if my husband's here, they'll come and then they'll wander around because they don't necessarily want their home. I'm sure if people like really looked hard enough, if they were hardcore fans, they would like be able to tell that it was my daughter. But I try to keep them out of, I'm kind of protective of them. Like you'll see on social media, like I might post a picture if they were, we went to our local pizza place a few years ago and they were playing a game, it was an Aliens video game. And they're like, where are you? We want to shoot you, you know? So, Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I love you too. But I took a picture and it was from behind. So I try not to like, I don't know, it's probably my 
Mom. Yeah, no, that's that's story. All right, guys. So um, I would like to thank Carrie for her time today. Please do me a favor. Make sure you stop by her table. I guess autographs, say hi, take some pictures. Carrie, thank you so much for coming out. Hope to see you in another day's events. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.